There were 60 or 80 people out there most of the time at one time. I tried to count one time. There were about 82 or 83. When I counted and there were people coming and going. And so I don't know how many came all together, but I'm sure it was over 100 for the day. And uh, I, I just appreciate it. I, I had one of the guys from the Air Evac. They were here about two and a half or three hours, I think. Yeah. Maybe wasn't long or close. And uh, he, he enjoyed the music, he enjoyed the ministry, and, and uh, I was grateful to get an opportunity to expose them to it. And so uh, we're going to keep this dream alive. I don't know how we won't have Randy to do the legwork. I may call him in as a, a pinch hitter for, for that next year, but uh, we, we want to stay on track. This was a great opportunity for us to honor the people who serve our community and for us to, to, to get involved with other churches. Uh, the Apostolic Church came over, and I, I never would have guessed it. We invited them uh, because they, they have some very hard-line values on occasion. But they came, and they sang, and they praised the Lord, and they worshiped with us. And uh, there was no anim animosity or enmity. The, the church was in, in one accord, and that's the way that's supposed to be. Let me remind you that also coming up very quickly now, October the uh, 14th, as you know, begins Covered Bridge. And uh, I'm looking for all the help we can get. We have about 15 people that have committed to help at some point or other in the Bridge Festival. I need you to give me specific time. So if you'll come by and see me or call me in the week, and let me put you on our schedule because we're going to be there from can to cane every day. And like everything else, we need every ounce of energy that we can get. We're going to be there. The staff will be there. And, and uh, we're going to be selling catfish. Uh, Miss Evelyn has been so gracious as to give us a spot at the Bridge Festival and to, to, to allow us to do that so we can help with our finances. Uh, I have to say after last week, uh, unusual weekend uh, income-wise, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, we took in less than $525, which has never happened before. And it takes us about $2,500 uh, really to get everything done per week. And so we, you can tell we're behind the eight ball. And the Bridge Festival will give us an opportunity to raise some money to help offset some of that. We've had a couple of months through the year that we've staggered a little bit. And so I, I tell you that not to beg, plead. I told my mom and my dad, I told my mom and dad this week, I said, don't care what happens, I'm all in. I'm here till the last, till they lock us out. And uh, I need you to, to, to decide you're all in. Because you're going to stay till the last breath. Because it's going to take, we've had a lot of change this year. I understand incomes have changed. Retirements and, and changing of jobs, people without jobs. All of those things are happening. People moving. We're going to lose Roberta and Randy. Those are all things. But God knows exactly what's going on. This is not uh, This is not an upheaval. It's not something that people are upset about. It's just change that's coming. And we need the people of God to say, you know what, God, I'm going to figure out a way to help you be a part of the answer to this plan. So we ask you to be in prayer, and we ask you to give. I'm going to ask our ushers to come right now and uh, wait upon us for God's tithe and your offering. You know there's a need. I know there's a need. I'm going to give. You give and we're going to trust the Lord. Let me also say that on uh, October the 27th, we're doing the trunk or treat again. It'll be on Thursday night this year rather than Wednesday night, which is much better for us. But uh, we're going to have uh, the trunk or treat and we're going to have a great time there. So be looking forward to that. Last year we did uh, skits and ministered to 11 or 1,200 people that went through that thing last year, and uh, it's a powerful thing. So get your mind focused. October is here. We've got lots to do, and we've got to keep going in the kingdom of God. Can you say that? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, to minister to us as we give. Lord, I've asked you through the night, through the days this week, Lord, to meet the financial need. I know there are people in this room that you have said you were going to break the financial hold on them that they might literally give and see the blessing of God. Lord, I pray right now that if they are a doubt, that you would open their hearts and make them aware that you're going to set them free when they're faithful and they're giving. Lord, it's a biblical command. It creates biblical blessing. And God, I ask you to do it right now in Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're standing on holy ground, church. Turn with me in your Bibles to the 13th chapter of the Judges. While you're turning, let me say happy birthday to Robbie. Halfway to 104, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you that can divide can figure out how old you In Judges chapter 13, verse 24, the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahana, Dan, between Zorah and Eshtal. Samson went down to Timna and saw there a young Philistine woman. And when he had turned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timna. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother, and as they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands. And he might have torn a young goat, but he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you to help us see and understand and know that we are a part of your plan. And that your plan is perfect. Though we don't understand all of the plan, though we don't understand everything that comes our way, we know that you are in charge. And I ask you, Lord, in the process that we not be compromised. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, used to, I would have said to you as a church, all of you are familiar with the story of Samson, but I am finding more and more that there are people in the house of God who don't know the story of Samson. They've heard about Samson being a strong man. They know the movie Samson and Delilah. They know a little bit of the seduction that took place there, but they really don't know the story of Samson. For if you're not careful, you'll take Samson merely to be a fool. And he was never just a fool. He was always a part of God's attention to the Philistines as it related to Israel. Now first let me say to you, it's important that you and I understand in our walk with God, we were never intended to be a part of the world. He said you're in the world, but you're not of the world. It's a very difficult type of to walk sometimes, to, to live like a godly person and not become like the world and assimilate the world's values. He gave us instruction that we would go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that none would, would be without knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He intended that we bring them from where they are in their relationship to God in the world to a relationship like we have through the blessing and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the Old Testament, there had not been a sacrifice given once and for all. It was still necessary for sacrifice to be made on a regular basis. And once again, Israel, as you get to the 13th chapter of Judges, finds themselves compromised. Finds themselves under the Philistines because they've been disobedient to God. I believe that a relationship to God that is in trouble is involved with three different things. The first of which is compromise. You see, Samson was born to be the leader of Israel to challenge the Philistines. God, even through His wisdom, put in His heart to love a woman from the Philistines that was not of His own tribe, that was not of His own nature, not of His own nation. And that could be a problem. You see, God never intended 